everybody, I'm Deacon Z, Deacon Nick, welcome to a rising floor. Today we've got a great segment for you today. Today we've got a great segment for you today. My third grade teacher, Miss Granahan, would whack my knuckles with a ruler for saying it that way. But we've literally got an NFT marketing plan to share. And I've written this article for artists. And when I mean artists, I'm really I'm talking about real artists. So somebody who is established or a new artist who creates artwork, you know, and wants to convert their art into NFTs. But what I'm going to go through can be used for any type of collection. So whatever, you know, you don't have to be an artist for this to work. So anyhow, thanks for joining me today. This might be a little longer than normal because there's really a lot of information here. So let's get started. For an artist making his or her first venture into the NFT world, it can be daunting. Countless NFTs sit unspoken for. That should say unspoken for. Hmm. Countless NFTs speak unfo unspoken for in the dark corners of the blockchain waiting to be adopted. But don't fret. There's hope for your little friends yet. So you want to see my operation. There, that's a line from a movie somewhere, by the way. Um, the guy says, so you want to see my operation? And then he pulls his shirt off and he's got a big scar on his belly. But nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. Nya, 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 nya. Get your poop together and chill, baby. Chill. Last week we talked about how to use certain words to increase your NFT sales and community. And I call it the NFT soft sell. Read it by clicking here, but you can't click there. But if you go to arisingfloor.com forward slash articles, you can go through all of our articles and, and really get whatever help you need. As an unknown solo NFT artist, or more specifically an artist with talent but no following, it can be intimidating, of course, for anyone to launch an NFT collection. After all, OpenSea, Magic Eden, and countless other marketplaces are full of incredible NFT artwork that next to nobody has seen or heard of, much less bought or minted. For an artist making his or her first venture into the NFT world, it can be daunting. But don't fret, there's hope for your little friends yet. For a good artist who's willing to come into your first launch with an open mind, a willingness to learn and work, and realistic expectations, success is within your reach. Now, I'm far from an artist, by the way. Um, if I tried to draw a stick figure, it would probably end up like little circles. I'm not good at all, right? But... So I'm the last person to ask for help drawing your NFTs or your art, but I am qualified to give you some good steps to help you launch the program from, from many years of experience. First, let's qualify where I feel you should set your expectations and why and, and the type of person that this article has been written for. And like I said, you can use these steps for just about any type of NFT collection. You don't have to be an artist, but I am gearing this article, this newsletter towards that. There's a significant difference in what to do and where to start if you're an artist with a large following or you're well known or you have published art or you have your own gallery, right? Then you're going to do things totally different. But if you're someone starting fresh with nothing but a twinkle in your eye, your creativity and a vision, this article will be perfect for you. I'll be writing this newsletter for the latter, someone who has more ambition and talent than endorsements and numbers of followers on social media. So this is for somebody starting fresh, right? I'm also going to be focusing on the new NFT artist who might have very little money to toss into the project, maybe a little bit, right? Um, but not enough to put thousands into paid ads and, and that type of thing, or, or hire a marketing agency. If, if you've got deep pockets, you can hire an, a marketing agency that specializes in NFTs um, to handle a lot of this for you. Or you just go out and hire someone like me to be your CEO or CMO, um, and, and then you're in good shape. But that's really expensive, right? Having said that, a lot of this plan will still work for someone who has a following, who can afford a paid marketing campaign or agency, and who has a name. Um, it'll just be easier for you, right? But don't feel sorry for yourself if that's not you. All of those people started one day with, an easel and a paintbrush, and only their mom and brothers and sisters to sell, for, sell to, so you can get there too. Nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. Um, this comes from a commercial back probably in the 80s now. Um, 
And the jingle was, everybody doesn't like something, but nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. Sara Lee cakes and pies and that type of thing. But I can't remember what I did last Tuesday, but I could sing the Gilligan's Island song from beginning to end. Anything I watched on TV when I was like a kid, it's up here forever, unfortunately. I mentioned above that you're going to need to be willing to work hard and have realistic expectations. Both are required when you're starting any business. And don't be confused. Launching an NFT collection is a full-time business. You, you can't just do this casually. I mean, you could, right? You could launch an NFT collection casual, casually, come to Discord an hour a day, say your prayers at night and hope somehow your Discord or Telegram gets full and people are climbing over each other to buy your stuff. But it's probably not going to happen unless you're putting in some serious hours or, again, you have the money to hire other people to do it for you. <clears throat> Treat it otherwise without help and unless you're scamming for no reason other than a cash grab, then we don't want nothing to do with you. You will not succeed. Second to that, know that your artwork needs to be exceptional. I mean, your art has to be good, especially in today's bear market. It has to be incredible. It has to be amazing. And I realize that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but as an artist, I assume, I assume you have assorted unique styles and ideas, right? You probably have different techniques, different ways, you know, different, maybe different, <clears throat> you know, I'm not an art guy, right? But I know different artists have like certain niches they go into, certain types of artwork. And a lot of you guys, you're so creative, you could do just about anything. So, you know, you might have different collections that look different and stuff. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I suggest, like I say, know that you're not on an island. The competition is steep, and your work is going to be compared side to side, side by side to others. <clears throat> so it's not like somebody's going to make a decision to buy one of your pictures, go to your gallery, and look at all of your pieces and pick the one that they like the most, right? Buying NFTs are different. People are going to be looking at what you've got to offer and then looking at what Artist B has to offer, and artist C has to offer, and everybody else, right? So, um, so your first in, for your first endeavor, I suggest you lean in the direction of pleasing most of the people most of the time. Everyone doesn't like something, but doesn't nobody doesn't like Sara Lee. So be like Sara Lee. <clears throat> for your NFT collection, I suggest you choose the style that uh, more people are likely to really love. Don't go after that tiny little, you know, weird niche of art lovers. So assuming you're ready to go and your talent is superb, first you need a plan. And this should include a marketing plan, right? You should have a launch plan and a marketing plan. Fortunately, we're going to go over both here. After all, there's a lot more to do before and alongside the marketing if you want your new NFT collection to become successful. <clears throat> Sorry about my, my throat. All of a sudden, <clears throat> it's like I got a horse in my throat or a frog in my throat or whatever assorted animals assuming you're ready to go and go to work and your talent is superb you need a plan uh, i read that already step one define your niche and your unique selling proposition determine your niche within the nft market and determine what makes your click your collection unique or different than others right what are you going to do besides just your style of art what are you going to do to make your art stand out? Uh, and if you're not sure exactly what we mean by USP or your unique, unique selling proposition, I did write a detailed article about it, why every collection needs a USP, especially in the future with SEC laws and things like that. And, and I'll get there later. But um, if you want to read that article, go to risingfloor.com forward slash articles, and it's there. And if you're watching this YouTube video, there's a video of me of it somewhere and i know what you're thinking but my artwork is my niche yes pablo we know <laughs> but remember that competition i was talking about this is not a gallery so you got to do something you have to do something that turns the head of people online who just see a picture you got about that long catch their attention and make them stop at your you know your page on that open sea or wherever right when you're rich and famous, you can let your soup cans carry you. But for now, you need a unique selling proposition. The USP is the window to your brand. So 
determine if your brand is going to be your name, a business name, or your collection name. Maybe you've got a one name name, like Prince or Madonna or something like that. You know, I know you artists are finicky types. Not finicky, that's not the right word. Um, <clears throat> some are better for certain types of NFT collections than others. The decision, it has to be yours, right? But in my opinion, as an artist, you should probably be using your actual name or a pseudonym. Again, I don't know anything about selling art, but I do know how to sell things online. So here's some ideas. Possibly partner with some social media influencers. Have them like be your partner in this. Give them a little cut of whatever you sell on launch day or something and get them to promote to their mega people, right? Find a company to endorse you and maybe the company will give a coupon or discount or freebie. So on launch day, because anyone that buys today on launch day, you're going to get, you want something more than their art, right? Imagine this. <clears throat> Imagine you're selling your NFTs for 50 bucks. And, and right, this is all, doesn't matter, right? Let's just pick 50 bucks. So imagine you're selling your NFT for 50 bucks. And you can partner with a company who gives you a coupon for something for free or 50 bucks off if someone goes there and shops. So now people can spend 50 bucks for your NFT and then go use that coupon and get their 50 bucks back in a sense, right? Again, this something like that will make you stand out or, or let you co-market with their name so you can market to all of their people. Uh, you just want to find something to give more value to the purchase, to the mint. If not a partnership, do something on your own. Maybe choose, you know, the first 50 of your buyers or all of your buyers and do something unique, like maybe have a contest. Everyone that mints three on launch day, we're going to put all your names on a wheel and spin the wheel. And one of you or five of you, whatever, right? You're going to mail them the original piece. But this is if you're using your original artwork, right? Paintings is what I'm kind of assuming now. What if you, what if you sent them the original to one person that buys on launch day, the actual original you drew, is that going to get people to want to buy? I think so, right? Um, or even a, a litho or a water graph or a water graph, an autographed copy or a watercolor or, or maybe a framed copy, copy or a t-shirt with one of your pictures on it. And, and this, you just got to build them into the cost, right? I know if I knew I was getting a t-shirt to mint an NFT, from you and from that guy I wasn't, I'd be much more likely to mint your NFT. <clears throat> Maybe give them, you know, the other, oh, that's wrong, NFT. I should say ETH. Maybe give them both the Ethereum and the Solana version. You know, this is a mint. This is an Ethereum mint, but I'm also creating the same collection on Solana and if you or, or on Bitcoin, you know, Ordinal. And if you buy the Ordinal, <clears throat> you're going to get the Ethereum version. Or maybe handwrite thank you notes to the first 50 buyers. Um, you know, who knows? As an artist, your signature could be worth something. All I'm saying is be creative. Find something to stand out, to do more than the next guy does, right? Or the last 100 guys do. Uh, and this is, you You could do things like this <clears throat> with any NFT. Nobody does this stuff, right? You want to sell out in today's bear market? Do some of this stuff, you will. Second, create high quality NFTs. Ensure that your artwork and assets are, are the highest quality. That goes without saying, right? If they have to be nowadays. Um, especially as an art, as an artist, right? You, you want your, NF, your NFTs uh, accurately show your craft, right? So people are gonna judge everything else from you later based on your first one. Set up a website and social media profiles. Create a professional website with a bio and Put some examples or maybe a page with all of your art, depending on, you know, how much you have. Um, share interesting things about yourself and what motivates you. I mean, a lot of this is common sense, right? But there's so many NFT collections that don't have a website. Establish social media profiles on platforms like Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, Discord to connect with your audience. Um, so number four, I mean, some of this goes without saying but people don't do it. Develop a marketing strategy. Plan your initial marketing efforts in advance. Consider how you'll create anticipation and excitement leading up to the launch. And I'll share a detailed plan. This is your launch strategy down further down or in a few minutes, I'll share the marketing strategy. 
nya, 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 nya. Uh, I know I'm a little goofy. Start a teaser campaign as you grow your social media platforms before you launch. Share sneak peeks of the NFTs, maybe some behind the scenes content, little videos of you creating the I mean, if you're an artist and, and the NFTs are copies of your art, nothing wrong with sending them pictures um, of you or pictures of maybe partially completed pieces, uh, a video of you doing the work. These are all things you could put on your social media, on your website, do anything you can to create anticipation. Step six, plan a launch event, prices and quantities. Plan a big launch event and, and, and come up with all the details for your launch on Mint Day. Um, when I designed a launch in the past, it was like a circus, right? I mean, there were games, contests, rewards. We had people writing poems and drawing pictures and suggesting names for our characters. It was a game, right? So we let the community name some of our characters and write backstories. Whatever you can do to get people involved and interact is a plus, right? Make you launch fun. It's kind of like compared to serving champagne. Um, compared to serving champagne at a real gallery launch, right? Use your imagination. Do something that people are going to be excited about and that they're going to remember in the future. Send personal invitations. Make people feel special. Create scarcity, urgency, and fear of loss or FOMO by, you know, maybe limiting the number of NFTs original uh, available originally, or maybe the first 24 hours, give everyone that mints in the first 24 hours a lower price or, or something like that. You want to come up with a reason for people to mint right away and to mint multiples. You mint three, get the fourth one free, something like that, right? Finalize your USP, which really so much of this is what becomes your USP and your brand, right? Um, keep in mind, you could always release more in the future. You could have a new collection. You could add additional utility. So make a grand gesture on launch day and do whatever you have to do to draw attention to your community. Step seven, determine mint details and technical matters. Decide what NFT marketplace, this is the tech stuff, right? Um, you know, determine, decide what marketplace you're going to launch on. You know, OpenSea, Rarible, Magic Eden, is it going to be an ordinal? Is it going to be an NFT? Are you going to go on Mintable? Find and determine who will handle the contracts, creating the contracts for the NFTs and the mint coordination. What blockchain, do, what blockchain do you use? Wallet creation, you know, all the tech stuff, right? Um, I'm assuming you're an artist. You're not an NFT expert. So, Maybe find someone and, and hire them or pay them to partner with you or give them a commission or, or something or do a lot of work and learn. The tech part of the launch isn't my true wheelhouse of expertise. I mean, I know more than the average bear, but at some point I'll find a poster author so I can provide this information accurately as well. So someday I'll, I'll interview or, or I'll have a guest, someone else write a newsletter covering all that stuff for you. Oh, step eight. I, I have to go in and make the Old. It's a good thing I do these. I find all the mistakes that I didn't catch last time. Put the proper additional people in place. Decide if you're going to be doing most everything on your own at first, which a lot of first-time NFT producers do, right? Or if you're going to put people into positions like moderators, shillers, community managers, marketers, virtual assistants, or others, and decide who you're going to hire, if you're going to hire them at all, or at least have a plan. Because they're certainly not all needed at first. Uh, they can be paid. They can volunteer. Some come from your community. Sometimes the best place to find moderators or shillers or managers, whatever, is right from your community. People that know your project are the ones you prefer to pay to work for you, right? Not somebody you have to teach everything. Number nine, become informed. Stay updated on NFT trends and industry news and laws. I guess I should have included that too. Long before launching, buy some art NFTs on your own from somebody else so you know what the experience is like so you could improve on it, make your launch better. Start spending time in other projects' discords and begin to follow other projects' social media channels. Learn from those who have been successful before you. Learn the industry lingo and language. Get some new ideas that adapt your strategy to the changing and evolving market. And that's, that's not a one-time thing, right? That's ongoing. Um, and I mentioned learn the laws. 
uh, I think I wrote about this down below, but if I didn't, you know, we see the SEC suing people now for promising profit from NFTs. And they're saying, well, if you're promising profit, it's a security and you don't have a license. Don't ever talk about them making money with your NFTs. Don't write it, don't post it, don't say it. Here's the, the stuff I already talked about, right? A USP, that's the reason. You know, if you never promise anyone they're gonna make money, you could still sell out your NFTs. And in the future, that's what NFTs are gonna be, right? You're gonna buy your concert tickets, they're gonna be on NFTs. You're gonna buy a car wash coupon, it's gonna be on an NFT. Those are the things they're gonna to use to sell NFTs. So be smart, right? Maybe talk to an attorney, an NFT lawyer. Number 10, seek feedback. Collect feedback from your community and use it to improve your future collections, changes, events, and more. <clears throat> the launch, even if you sell out, is only the beginning, not the end. I mean, how many times do you see an NFT program launch? Maybe they sell out, maybe they don't, but then all of a sudden nothing happens again, right? That's not you. This is a business. It's a long-term business. If you, or, or don't launch. You're going to fail or you're going to take people's money, unless you're planning on ripping people off, right? But if you don't plan on this being a long-term endeavor, you shouldn't be launching. You, that's not fair to your people, right? The people you're selling to. As the artists stay present and available to your community and they'll support you long-term. This is all part of what? Getting your poop together. I love that picture. I just <laughs> think it's so cool. It's poop together, get it? There are other tasks and responsibilities that you'll find are needed as you progress, but the above will get you off on the right foot. Planning is critical because unlike someone purchasing your artwork for home display or who may never interact again, NFT sales are community driven and many NFT communities are very critical and outspoken, right? So you gotta prepare for that. In other words, they'll know if you don't have your poop together. So poop up. Next, of course, is marketing. Some things on the list below will cost a few shekels to put in place. Many are free. Um, and, and this is nowhere, I'm gonna go through the marketing plan now, right? This is nowhere everything you can do, nowhere near everything you can do, but this is a good place to start. This stuff I'm gonna cover could get you right off, could even sell you out, right? Um, Cause there's thousands of places you can advertise from ads to billboards, smoke signals, carrier pigeons, wherever you want, right? But just know that this is not a complete list. What I list, do, what I do list below are strategies strategies I found to be both simple and doable by the average person without a whole bunch of marketing training. Are pretty free to do. Some of them will cost a little money, uh, and will get you the most bang for your buck. Right. Uh, of course, I'll remind you about my comments above concerning being willing to go to work. It's not easy. That's why most projects fail. Um, either they're not prepared or they're not capable or unwilling to put in the work, right? Well, now is the time to start working and make that decision. These will typically be done concurrently. So in other words, I've got these labeled step one, step two, step three, step four, just like the ones above. They don't really go in that order. They go in whatever order you need to do them, right? They all need to be done. So do them as soon as possible and as completely as possible. First question I get all the time, and this is kind of a weird place for this comment, this subheading to be. Anyway, how often should I post? More. That's always the answer. How much should I post? More. Whatever you're posting, post more. Some of the, yeah, that is a weird place for that to be. I must have added it. And, hmm. Some of the tasks below are done once and some are ongoing. The ongoing work can be started by you hired out to an agency or you can even train someone to work for it and do it, and, and do it for you, right? Uh, I suggest considering a good VA or, or virtual assistant. They can do an excellent job for a really fair price, especially if you hire somebody from the Philippines or Pakistan, India, the non-Western countries. Um, and I'm not saying that someone from the US or the UK or Australia won't do an excellent job. You'll just pay three to times more for the same job, for the same effort, the same work, right? So, you know, that's that's up to you, right? Um, but I, I have had full-time VAs, uh, mostly from the Philippines. Um, I've had one from Pakistan who did a great job for me. 
um, and other places too, I guess. But I've had I had six full time VAs for almost ten years, um, and I can refer some if if you want to hire somebody. I, I do know people. Um, start on your own if needed, and as you bring in some money, use it to grow your marketing team. Really, you know, and, and this has nothing to do with NFTs. Well, I guess it does. <laughs> But I used to have, you know, I ran a marketing agency for 11 years, digital marketing. And, and I've had, I, I have clients call me and say, we're going to, we're struggling right now. So we're going to have to let you go. You know, they'd be calling to cancel my services because money's rough. They're going through a dry patch or a slow spell or whatever. The last thing you want to stop doing when money is tough is marketing. It's almost like the chicken and the egg, right? And I understand, I fully understand. I've talked to hundreds of business owners in the same situation. And anyway, I'm ranting. So number one, this is the marketing part. I should have probably done this in a separate video, but I don't care. So here we go. Let me warm up. Step one, build an online presence. And a lot of these you know, right? But if you remember, we included the start of this above, you know, having a website um, and such. So a website to display your art, your social media profiles should be complete by the time you launch. <laughs> you should also have, I, I said that, oh, you should also have profiles on whatever NFT marketplace you're using, you know, OpenSea or wherever secondary is going to come from. And you should have a Discord or Telegram set up for your community where they're going to meet. You should have profiles on social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok. Show your best art in the header images and be consistent. And what I mean by be consistent, have all of your social media homepages, you know, your profiles look relatively the same. So if somebody's following you on Twitter and they see your YouTube they should kind of right away know it's you from logo, brand, whatever. These platforms are essential for promoting your NFTs. And if I had to rank them in order, I'd say for an NFT, Twitter is most important. Um, but don't ignore the others. You, you never know where that one guy is going to come from who's going to buy 20 or 30 of your NFTs. And that is so not unheard of, right? It's unusual, but it's not uncommon. The average person doesn't do it, but there's a handful of NFTs I own 20 or more of. Step two is the content creation. Can you guys hear my bird out there? Hi, Curly. Hi, Curly. She's not screaming. If she screams, I need to go up and cover her, but not her, but the cage. This will be the longest of the steps and probably the most important. So bear with me. This is where the rubber meets the road in organic marketing or free marketing, right? Content creation, also known as posting. In time, I'll have a lot of articles teaching how to write headlines, use, head, use keywords, choose and create images and more. But for now, just know that you need daily content, especially on Twitter, but it should be in more places. Um, here's a link. Check here to see what articles I've already written. So depending on when you're watching this, there might be 40 articles there. There's not 40 yet. You should be posting pictures of your artwork, links to your project, links to your Discord or website and marketplace. Also share your artistic process, behind the scenes content, stories about your artwork. Tell your story. People want to know who, especially if you're an artist, right? I'm intrigued by artists. Like when I see pictures that a good artist sat down and just took a pencil and drew, I, I'm awestruck. I mean, it's so amazing to me what some of you guys can do. So tell your story and engage with your audience to build a loyal following. Use social media both to educate and entertain your holders, as well as find new ones. You should also mix in interesting stories about NFTs, uh, about art like yours, like what kind of art, you know, I know there's different, like surrealism, is that art, um, abstract, things like that. Tell your people why, why you chose what you chose and, you know, what do you see in a picture? And by telling people that it will kind of been planted in, into them and they'll start seeing the same things you see. And that's when you gain a fan, right? Be creative and follow and watch other collections, social media and accounts for ideas. Some of the stuff is duplicated from above because that's a launch plan and this is a marketing plan. But 
How often should you post? Always post more. This is where that was supposed to be. Remember, I. You should at least post daily on each channel. So if you're on eight social media uh, prof platforms, you should have at least posted a day, but you should have more. According to a lot of social media marketing experts and gurus, you should be posting at least 12 to 15 times daily on each social media channel. <laughs> Are you shaking yet? That's a lot of work, isn't it? Um, AI is helpful. Uh, and uh, there's a system I, I'll write about it one day that you could use to like write one thing and break it down into bits, but I don't want to go there now. Personally, I've never done this much posting myself, right? But there's days I've easily had 10 or more posts on Twitter. Um, the people te teaching to post 10 or 15 times on each channel or 60 to 70 posts a day, they typically have a staff of eight or 10 people doing it for them too, right? So it's easy, it's easy for them to say. Um, so, but realistically, do as much as you can with the amount of time that you have at your disposal. Just know that unless you're posting 50 times a day, you should always be posting more, whatever more is in your instance. And know this, especially on YouTube, once you post something, it's there forever, right? So it's not like running an ad that they see it once, and unless you keep paying, they'll never see it again, or a banner ad at the top of a website somewhere. Um, when you make a YouTube video, it's there forever. People might see it in two years and five years and eight years. So you're really just investing in your overall brand. Having said that, if you're on your own and can't focus on quantity, which is fully understandable, right, when you're new, put all your efforts into quantity and, and make the posts great. Uh, make them educational. Make them intriguing. Make them exciting. Just make them the best you could. And, and focus more on the headline. If you're not doing a lot, I mean, you should always focus on the headline, right? But you, your headline should do something to hook the reader. Because we see ads all day long. All day long, we see ads everywhere. We ignore most of them. You know, we don't even pay attention to them anymore until the one that for some reason you stop at. When you find yourself stopping at an ad or stopping at an article that just, you know, you're ignoring the rest, but that one makes you click, Stop for a second and look at what they did. How did they write their headline? How did they write their sub headline? What did they do? The picture, real important, right? What did they do to get you to stop there and start to learn to copy those things? If you want to automate the process, here's a new AI software I bought that claims it will create the posts, schedule them, upload them, and repost them. Do your own research because uh, things change, but I bought it myself and, and I'll, I'll report back after I test it. I just bought it like three or four days ago. It created some ads for me, not ads, some posts for me really well, nice posts. Um, but I still need to get into the whole auto posting and that type of thing. If you want to take a look, there's a click. It's at nftsocialposter.com. Number three, collaborate with influencers. Start to reach out and partner with influencers, especially art influencers. And influencers may have something in common with your work or your USP, that can help, they can help you reach a lot bigger audience through shout outs, collaborations, reviews. You know, if your NFT is about cats, contact cat influencers, right? Somebody who has 15,000 cat lovers on their Facebook page, do you think they might be able to send a few buyers your way, right? But you gotta do the work, reach out, be creative and create a win-win partnership. Do something for them, they do something for you. You know, you hear, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. One hand washes the other, all the different cliches, right? But that's really the key to marketing and collaborations. Create a win-win relationship where everybody wins, including the person that's buying your art. If possible, do some live streams or Twitter spaces with other influencer communities. This will give you an opportunity to get the information in front of their people in an extended way. Consider giving them a special contest just for their people. Like, let's use the cat example, right? If you have an NFT about cats, um, what if you, you know, gave a special offer or a special contest just for their Facebook group um, or something like that, right? Again, it all goes back to the USB. If possible, do some live streams. I said that already. Step four, collaborate and partner with other NFT projects. Now, this should have an asterisk there, but I'm not the biggest fan of this type of collab, but they can be useful if used properly. Um, and because most of the time, the other projects, all they want you to do is post about their whitelist offer in your 
Discord, right? You know how sometimes you go to other ten NFT discords and you see over and over again, join this whitelist, join this whitelist, you know, be the first 10 to join this whitelist. You got to retweet and join their discord. Well, you're not marketing for yourself, right? You're marketing for them. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that if you're going to post some other collections info in your discord, that they're doing at least the same for you, right? And the more you're going to get something out of it, before you send your people to spend their money with some other collection. Only do it if, the, if you get exposure to their community. I guess I said this. Only do it if you get exposure to their community as well. If you're sold out, I guess that's fine, right? Or, or comfortable enough for one reason to send people to buy their NFTs. Again, I go back to the whole win-win thing. If you're going to collab with another NFT, just make sure it's a win-win, that both sides get something out of it. And here's one. That could be so big, but a lot of people are afraid to do it. Step five, marketing to your warm market. And I'm going to keep it short because there's already an article about it. Um, the article is called Four Ways to Market NFTs, and it's a goofy title. I, I screwed up that one maybe. But, again, if you go to arisingfloor.com forward slash articles, um, it's at four ways to market NFTs. And you'll see why that – title makes sense once you start reading it, but it doesn't make sense otherwise. But anyway, um, it just basically, well, I'll read. I would say read the complete article. You should. But if not, skip down to where, it's, to where it says fish where the fish are, right? You want to fish where the fish are. And that's what marketing to your warm market is. Um, like I said, most people won't want to do this. But I, I suggest, because you'll be too self-conscious or intimidated, I suggest you suck it up and make it happen. It will buy you, get you buyers consistently with no budget needed and quickly. The condensed version is to collect, just collect information from everybody you know, your aunts, your uncles, the people you work with, friends from church, everyone you know, right? Create a list, contact them, let them know what you're doing. A lot of them are just going to go and mint one of your NFTs as a favor, but who cares if you're new, right? You need the money, you need to sell out, you need to create FOMO. This is all part of it, right? So go get them, Tiger. Shill, baby, shill. I said shill, damn it, shill, not shell. I don't think anyone, I doubt anyone got this joke, but that's what it was supposed to be. Step six, shill, shilling, right? You've probably heard of that. In this context, context it's going to other NFT projects, discords, other social media sites, other groups. Basically, I could have said spam, baby, spam. Um, Go to other places where NFT or art lovers hang out and spam. Post about your collection. I'll do it smart, right? Don't just put link after link. Just post things like, by the way, has anyone seen this collection? And put your name there or put your link if you can get away with it. When you Here's a good way to do it. Like when you go to a Facebook group or a Twitter and there's already a long conversation going, you can usually toss a link in there with nobody seeing it, but um, do it yourself. You have your VA do it. Give your community a contest to help, but it's free and it works, right? Just be creative. Basically, you're going to go post about your stuff everywhere. A great place to post, too, is if you could find YouTube videos in this context about art um, and post. By the way, did you see this great art artist named Joe Steele, if that's your name? just launched an NFT with his artwork, um, and you can put a link. A lot of times it won't get deleted, and those are all art people, right? Seven, PR and press releases. In the case of most NFT projects, I wouldn't suggest a press release unless you've got the money. It's going to cost you a few hundred bucks. However, if you're an artist, truly an artist, and you're not just promoting you know, your typical 10,000 cats or 10,000 apes or whatever it is, I think it's worthwhile. It could be worthwhile the other way, too, if it's written properly, right? But since you're an artist, a press release, you know, local impressionist artist launches first NFT collection, things like that can really catch people's eye. Again, art people, because you want to get this on, um, on, on, on websites where they're advertising art and things like that. You can Google press release services and find lists of them for pay. It's usually a few hundred bucks. Preferably, you want to use a press release service that will get your post on Google News, right? That's going to get your more eyeballs. 
Um, and for a fee, they'll write it and they'll distribute it to hundreds of press release sites, news sites, and more. But Google it, take a look. Afterwards, make sure to send your press release manually to art and NFT related blogs. So, you know, once your press release is written, just send it to other blogs. Hey, I'd like to, if, I don't know if you do, get, it's called guest posting. I don't know if you do guest posting or not, but I'd love to talk about, or I'd love to have you post on your blog about my art collection I'm launching, right? Um, number eight, engage with your community. I know it sounds obvious, but active participation in discussions, responding to comments and building relationships within the NFT and art communities, including your own, especially your own. I think we've all, if you've bought any amount of NFTs, we've bought NFTs from someone and then maybe it sells out, maybe it doesn't, but all of a sudden the owner's gone, right? Um, He's never in Discord anymore. And everyone's, is this a rug? Is this a rug? I don't know. I don't know. It's the worst thing you can do. It's, you know, you can cripple your collection that way. You want to make sure that you're, you're active and you're vocal and you're engaged in your community. Um, step nine, offer rewards and incentives. Reward early supporters and mentors. And this is part of your USP, right? Your unique selling proposition. But reward your early people with certain benefits like extra NFTs, access to future drops, limited edition merchandise, titles. People love titles in discords, right? Give them a special title. This should go hand in hand with your USP, but things like hats or t-shirts with your artwork and web address could be a great reward and a walking advertisement to boot. Step 10, paid ads. I will make a whole newsletter about this in the future, but I want to plant the seeds so you start thinking about it and keep it in the back of your head. But since this article, it's, it's more of a guide for sure, starting on a shoestring, right? This is more for people that don't have a lot of money to pour into it. I'm not going to go really deep into it. Um, I already said that. If you have any specific questions or you want to start running paid ads for your collection, contact me in Discord. That'll give you some thoughts, give you some help. Um, for an NFT collection, paying the most watch YouTubers, these are the things, the three things that if you're going to run ads at first, pay YouTubers to give you, a, you know, talk about your release, your launch, your rent in their YouTube, paid ads on social media, especially Twitter and Facebook, and rent, renting banner ads where they'll put like a big ad about your collection on their website where they already have the perfect eyeballs reading them is usually the best. And there's the right way and the wrong way to all those two. But, and I bolded this. However, paid ads can be a fast track to either riches or the bankruptcy court, depending on how well you use them. I don't suggest you do them without help, without hiring somebody, without getting trained. You can go through 10 grand literally in an hour putting ads on Google. Probably less than that, right? Um, just be careful. Be careful. They can work so well if you know what you're doing, but they are a money suck if you don't. Step 11, NFT calendar websites. There's a lot of websites. Just Google NFT calendar. There, there are websites that list all the upcoming NFT mint dates, all the launches, and they're usually free. You just go to the site. They're also good places to, put, to run banner ads, right? because people are going there looking for NFT launch dates, so they find you, but they're free. So Google NFT calendar, or yeah, just NFT calendars and offer NFT calendar website. And then just go put in all your information, put in a picture and they'll advertise for you. Number 12, analytics and feedback. Use analytics tools to track the performance of your marketing. This is so important. Uh, adjust your strategy based on what's working and what's not. It doesn't matter if you use Google Sheets, an automated program, Excel, or a yellow pad on your desk. Make sure to use something. If you if you have good enough records, like even if you're just every time you tweet, or not every, not even every time you tweet, just when you have a tweet that gets more likes or more shares or more responses, record it somewhere so you can model that tweet because now you know that's one your people like and you can use it again in the future. Data, data, data. Without data, marketing cannot be effective long-term, especially when you're running paid ads. Oh, my goodness. 
So there you have it. Sure, you'll find other ideas, but these are the most important to me now, right, that I think you should be doing now, today. Plus creating an email list. And there's another, I already made a video about that, and I just realized I forgot to put it in this article, but I will. But yeah, you need to create an email list of your people that they sign up for. Go to arisingfloor.com forward slash articles. I wrote two articles about that already, two newsletters. So um, as I already wrote, uh, wrote, I'll elaborate or said, <laughs> I'll elaborate on paid ad strategies as we move ahead, but I think the above will keep you plenty busy. Like always, if you have any questions, please jump into the Discord and ask. It's my honor and pleasure to help. It really is. I wish more of you would post in Discord um, just for questions and Share what you're doing so I can give you some help. Not just me. There's other people in our Discord that could help too, right? Um, as always, I'll have the podcast that goes along with this newsletter updated soon. That's what we're doing right now. Each newsletter is recorded as a video podcast a few days after publication. And if you go to that link there or just Google a rising floor, um, go to YouTube and search a rising floor, you'll find all my newsletters spoken. I guess you call it a podcast or a video. Now I'm starting to ramble. So until next week, if you need help, ask for it. If you don't, prove it. Thanks for being here. I'm Deacon Z. Love you guys. See you next week. Bye.